My goal when I talk to like, I don't know if I would call it an alt-right or anything, but for like conservatives or for anybody to disagree with, I think the goal is to like find common ground and then steer them towards your prescription. I think one of the big problems a lot of leftists or progressives or whatever are having these days is they're not willing to acknowledge what everyone in the world sees as just being obviously true. I think that it's better to just acknowledge what is obviously true and then move towards what you believe um, we should be doing, you know, in, in the future. So like, for instance, I don't remember this exactly, but like the subject on cancel culture. Cancel culture is cancer culture. It, it, we need to stop. 99% yeah. of people in the center and everyone on the right sees it as being cringe it don't don't ever die on that hill when somebody starts talking about like oh like cancel be like yeah cancel culture sucks like yeah it's definitely gone overboard in some cases um and then boom move off that topic because if you get bogged down trying to deny its existence everybody in the middle like looks at you like what the fuck? this guy is like such an ideologue like acknowledge that are like um bad and then move on to like your prescription like move on to where you go from there wait I, who I is, is La who is lanny in your chat lanny's my girlfriend oh nice she's a moron so like she even just did it to me what i just said was that is transphobic hey guys i just wanted to do a real quick recap of a two-hour debate i just finished with a bread tuber named xander hall it's uh it should be linked down below in the description i honestly can't say i knew much about bread tube until recently as their rise on youtube really came about when I was off busy having a baby, but if you don't know about them, essentially they are a very left-wing socialist sphere of YouTube. I had absolutely no intentions of debating this group, but I found it fairly entertaining when a bread tuber reached out and challenged me to a debate immediately after I announced the release of my new children's book, The ABCs of Morality. Especially considering he challenged me to a debate on the book when he couldn't have possibly read it yet or even known what was in it. <laughs> oh, considering, no. Considering, I know Amazon's pretty good, but it takes more than a few minutes for a shipment to get to you. I've seen it a million times. <laughs> this was the one point everyone on Twitter or wherever said he could. It's like... It's like such, this is like, <laughs> this is like such an anime. You've got like the, uh, the protagonist or whatever is like, ha, well, you weren't ready for my, ah, uh, trans study. And then like the, uh, uh, the antagonist is like, huh, is that the NCBI ninjutsu? <laughs> I've seen that movie used against me a million times. <laughs> No serious ninjutsutsu person takes that move seriously anymore. It's been defeated for years. It's like... <laughs> it's like such a, it feels like such an anime moment. Hits vape. <laughs> like, comment, write some dumb shit below. But it turns out he was referencing the wrong study. Watching the Xander Hall Lauren Southern debate, and I'm very confused... Oh no, Mal the Infidel is the one that gets quoted by... Did Xander Hall confuse the Swedish transitioning study with the ROGD study? Yeah, they were talking about transitioning and Lauren cited the Swedish study and Xander Hall responded by giving the critique of the ROGD Fuck study, you, which isn't even about transitioning. Hey, what's up? Did you want to chat? I want to give you my thoughts going into that debate and why I went about it the way that I did and see if you think I succeeded in the way that I wanted to go about it or if I, if I didn't. And that's, that's what I'm really curious about, because I did pretty significant amount of research going into that debate about Lauren Southern, and, I'm, and I didn't want to just go in like, okay, here's every bad thing you've ever done. We're going to go over it, and you're going to be held accountable for it, because that would be not a good idea. Um, we're debating about a kid's book that she wrote. <laughs> like, There's not really much you can do about that other than be like, okay, so here's what you wrote. What did you mean by this? And then try to debate about whatever that runs into mm -hmm. my so are you familiar with what lauren southern's recent optics goal has been um i know that like i think a year ago she posted something wanting to be more moderate i also don't see the possibility for growth when i'm constricted by the expectations of an online right-wing tribe that i hold certain beliefs or that or i'm not a part of them anymore because i also have questions and criticisms within the right as well there are some issues there. If anything, I'd say I've taken the real life pill. I think people are multidimensional, complex beings, and they are worthy of trying to understand. You can't sum them up in a tweet you found six years ago, and you can't sum them up as a race or a gender, which too often polarizing political internet communities try to do. 
or that she'd like kind of broke it might have been two years ago she broke off from like the more extreme things but then looking recently it seems like she still kind of follows some of the more extreme stuff so i don't know but i yeah what about it she probably wants to be seen as more moderate it's probably better than being like an immigrant killing like boat riding person violating <laughs> foreign laws in other countries yep yeah you're completely right she's sort of rebranding to be like a, a moderate like center right but like a a, a rational reasonable thinker right mm -hmm. and i feel like going in and just being like, okay, so why do you believe this and this and this? So you're a Nazi, yada, yada, yada. That would be like mm -hmm. a horrible idea, optically speaking. To be fair, so to be a, if I can be a little bit charitable. Um, hold on, wait. Are you streaming on Twitch? Uh, Twitch and YouTube, yeah. Oh, okay. Just, to be a little bit charitable, it's also possible that she, her views have moderated a tad as well. That is possible too. That there is some legitimate... Um, change in belief over time there. If you guys are all gonna, because you guys all fucking simp so fucking hard over that shoe on head dipshit, if you guys are all gonna simp over her, then I can be a little bit charitable and say like, it's possible that Lauren has moderated a bit on her views over time, even if she is still like a Western values, white values kind of person. Yeah, like like you said before, or long time ago, you can't know what somebody's thinking. You have to kind of look at what they say. And lately, it doesn't seem like she's advocated for like the great replacement of white genocide stuff. So that would make me look even worse if I went in being like, you're a Nazi. Look at this shit that you did back in 2016, 2017. This documentary you made three years ago mm -hmm. where you went to this country and you did this. That It would look really, really bad. My main goal, I guess, was to come off as like a, a not crazy triggered SJW to a lot of the conservatives in our audience. And... To be fair, I've gotten quite a few messages from her fans saying, hey, I thought all all liberals and, and lefties and people on the left were crazy and 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 triggered and yada yada, and you were really reasonable. And I've gotten quite a few subscribers from her fan base because of that. So I, I feel like, while I definitely could have done better in that ballpark, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in that respect. I guess, <clears throat> and you probably agree with this, obviously I got a few facts wrong, uh, which is unfortunate because you can't see exactly where a debate about a kid's book is going to fractal off to mm -hmm. but when it came to the issue of like like which issue do you think i did the best at and which do you think i did the worst at when it came to like an argument over a topic so it's going to be hard to like do like best and worst uh because I, I think i disagree i think the biggest problem was the framing of the conversation um mm -hmm. I, like it is entirely possible that like a conservative person could put together like a children's book and it not be like a horrible thing i think it's like I think so. I think like framing this conversation as a discussion about the book and then trying to use that as like an opportunity to talk about like her past wrongs. I, I think that's kind of a rhetorically a mistake because I think it's going to make it look like and feel like an ambush. And there were even multiple points in the conversation. She was like, okay, I want to get back to talking about the book or whatever. Yeah, I, that was one of the worst things because I had the debate was about the book. Like that was the thing that started the whole Twitter argument that led into the debate. But like, what, what is there really to debate about the book? The book on its own in a vacuum isn't that big a deal. It's just kind of primes, it's meant well, to sure, prime that's kids like, for like conservative values, right? Well, that's like, but that's her whole point, right? The book in, yeah. in a vacuum isn't really a problem. Yeah, but then there's not really much debate about then. That was her um, whole point. That's why she took this debate, right? Because you basically came out before her book was even released saying like, oh, I bet this book's gonna be horrible. Let's debate about it. And it's like, well, how? Wow, <laughs> how could you even know that? That's that's her uh, entire argument, right? Yeah, the, the book was out, and I read it before the debate. I don't know why, but a lot of people people keep saying I didn't read the book. I read it multiple times. In well, it was that you hadn't read the, the book debate, before yeah. issuing the challenge, is my understanding. Oh yeah, yeah. So like the the way she advertised it was like to combat the woke lefty narrative or whatever on Twitter, and that's what kind of the original. What actually ended up happening was I just like quote tweeted the tweet about the book and was like, hey, I'm going to cover this on stream. Does anyone have a few pages of it that I can cover? And then she quote tweeted me and said, oh, here are a few. And I said, all right. I'll buy the book if you agree to come on stream and talk about it with me. And she said, okay, cool. Followed me on Twitter. We started talking in DMs. I bought the book. I read it. And then that's how we ended up um, having this conversation. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like her having that constant get out of jail free card with like the, the book being able to say, oh, well, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the book. I feel like that was constantly like a hindrance of my ability to debate her. Um... Yeah, maybe. I fuck. I don't know. Like this whole thing. Like you set you set yourself up at the beginning. E even if the intentions were a little bit more nuanced than just like I hate your book. Now let's argue about it that I haven't read yet. I think the framing of it came off that way. And, and even the initial conversation, like when you guys started talking, was going to be about the book. It just it feels like you set yourself up like in an, in an impossible, like you you were in an impossible battle right at the start because the the technically the conversation was about the book, right? 
So do you think like my first big mistake was like the entire concept of what we were debating? Yeah, I, I think that that was just like a huge mistake, right? Like I don't yeah. like JF and I'll argue JF on almost any part of his moral philosophy, but like I would never say like JF, everything you've done is so stupid. Like I'm gonna argue over something you've published before. I think it's probably dumb too. And then I read it and, and I like, I don't know if that's true. Like he's probably, I'm sure if he, I don't, I think, I think he's a PhD. I don't remember if he is and he's published something. So like I'm so, but I, I don't know if, everything is published is bad or not, right? That's That would be a bad approach. I would get destroyed in a conversation if I did that, right? Yeah, that, I agree with that. I think that that's one of the biggest mistakes. I want to go in with something, like in the future with debates, I want to go in with like, this is the topic we're discussing. This is a thing that I can research. This is something I can just bury my face in for the next three days and learn everything about, and then we can debate about that. So I, I definitely agree. That's like the entire premise was probably like immediately she already had a, a leg up on me on that one. I guess the I wrote some notes before the debate and like my four main objectives going into it were <sighs> hold on, let me read them off. Do not platform Lauren in a way that makes her harmful ideas more palatable to your audience, but make yourself palatable to her audience. Do you think like my audience was like swayed towards Lauren Southern? Um I think she looked fairly reasonable. I, I mean, your audience as a bread tuber are probably going to be majority like deranged socialists that are never going to be persuaded by anything because their friends uh, don't believe a certain thing. So they're probably safe. Um, but like in terms of like people in the center, I think that it made Lauren look um, very reasonable. I think we have to be really careful as no. Um, I think that a lot of care must be taken when it comes to defending some of the more extremist rhetoric on the left, because to average Americans or to average humans, it's just not going to be defensible. Like people going on Twitter and doing this shit where they talk about how like, um, where they talk about how like there's a fucking revolution and peace isn't going to be an option and blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't think it's, it's very hard to attack or condemn uh, Trump for his rhetoric and then to just come out and be chill with that kind of stuff. Like to an average person, it's just always going to make you look insane, I think. And, and I think that she had the upper hand there where like, we'll quote like, um, we'll quote stuff that Kaepernick has said and then condemn Trump who's in a vacuum what Trump is saying isn't quite as bad now in totality it's pretty obvious what Trump is doing but like I think you just have to I say bite the bullet but I don't think it's like a big I don't think it's that big a bullet to bite you just have to be like yeah I think that violent rhetoric probably shouldn't exist on Twitter period even if it's BLM people doing it or something else yeah I agree with that the with the Kaepernick quote and the BLM riots I I feel like I definitely should have just said Nope, I don't support those either. The reason Colin Kaepernick probably didn't get banned is because he didn't say that on Twitter and he didn't have the millions of eyes on him that the president has, right? That would sure, probably although that's, again, not good because, I mean, Kaepernick is pretty popular, right? Like, uh, yeah. Like, the, if, if Kaepernick was, like, a random person, sure, but we can't be like, oh, well, he's not the president. It's like, sure, but he's, like, an internationally known athlete. But, like, Okay, so do you... Because I, I, I don't know if that would, that could have been a good way to, it would have been a better way to go about it. Would have been saying, well, okay, well, the reason Trump got banned was because Kaepernick probably didn't have as many eyes on him. But at the same time, she could have been like, oh, he's a big athlete, ex-football player. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that in the future, just like biting the bullet on that one is probably the best thing to do. Just be like, okay, yeah, right, it's bad. And that would have worked. You did say that? No, I don't, I don't think I said that. Mm -hmm. Um balance tone in a way that won't scare off her audience like don't go at her like crazy and I, I feel like i kept my composure pretty well okay kind of so i'm getting irritated by this because i think that i conduct myself generally in conversations in a pretty respectful way but i see a lot of people do things that i would qualify as like debate bro things and for some reason people accuse me of doing this i don't think i do this much but i see it happen a lot there are a couple things that i see i'm being a pretty harsh or pretty critical here but i see a lot of people do it. not just you watch this a ton of people do this i think you have to be really careful with a couple of traps one uh, i don't know if you're aware of this or not xander but calling somebody by their name in the middle of conversation is a very condescending thing to do. And I think that most people will mm. get that, Xander. Like, very immediately will pick up on that. Yeah. I would be really careful for stuff like that because it makes you come up. Like, now, if the other person is being a piece of shit and another person is, like, going hard on you, I believe in matching tone. So if somebody wants to be a piece of shit to me, I'll roll around in the dirt because I think it's fun. But if the other person is being relatively respectful and you start laying in with, like, the this is a logical fallacy or, like, the studies don't show this, blah, blah, blah. Like, that stuff that is at the bottom i think so for instance in the trans conversation i think it's good to engage them on the material and, and engage them on the i'll say the philosophical levels like the ideas back and forth don't appeal to the studies until you've hit some like fundamental rock bottom where you just disagree over the numbers because i think that you can i think that you can find common ground and win rhetorically on higher levels rather than somebody saying well this is my opinion on this and then you're just going well all the studies disagree with you 
I think that as soon as you say that, I think that it, it comes across as kind of like a debate tactic. Or when you start calling out people for like gish galloping, or when you start using philosophy terms like consequentialism, like when you start saying stuff like this, I think it comes off as very debate bro -y. When Lauren Southern, for whatever faults she has rhetorically, comes off as like a very like polite, like trying to engage in honest conversation, like I don't want to say like naive person or whatever, but she comes off as being like very well-mannered, very good faith, very trying to like understand both sides and whatever, and is willing to make concessions seemingly when it seems like she ha has lost a point. So I, I think I would be very careful in trying to come off as like overly aggressive there. Okay. Yeah. Cause I felt like I wasn't aggressive enough. Like I let her talk too much at times and I, like I, I was too polite at some points. I didn't think about like the saying her name thing during a conversation. I didn't consider that being like uh, uh, rude. But in hindsight, no, that does make sense. Do you think I should have interrupted her more? It's not a matter of, no, I don't think you should have interrupted her more. I think that like, so I, my goal when I talk to like, I don't know if I'd call it an alt-right or I don't know, but for like conservatives or for anybody to disagree with, I think the goal is to like find common ground and then steer them towards your prescription. I think one of the big problems a lot of leftists or progressives or whatever are having these days is they're just not willing to, they're not willing to acknowledge what everyone in the world sees as just being obviously true. Um, I think that it's better to just acknowledge what is obviously true and then move towards what you believe um, we should be doing, you know, in, in the future. So like, for instance, I don't remember this exactly, but like the subject on cancel culture. Cancel culture is cancer culture. It, it, we need to stop. This shit is just fucking so beyond fucking cringe. 99% yeah. of people in the center and everyone on the right sees it as being fucking cringe. It, d don't, don't ever die on that hill. When somebody starts talking about like, oh, like cancel, be like, yeah, cancel culture sucks. Like, yeah, it's definitely gone overboard in some cases. Um, and then boom, move off that topic. Because if you get bogged down trying to deny its existence everybody in the middle like looks at you like what the fuck this guy is like such an ideologue like of course this shit is horrible right uh, I, I would just say like i would just say like 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 acknowledge shits acknowledge shit that are like um bad and then move on to like your prescription like move on to where you go from there um i'm trying to think like um during the like during oh god during the trans conversation there were so many directions you could have taken it and you <laughs> And you felt like you, it felt, that, I, I don't know how familiar people are with all the topics, but some of the things that came out were just really bad here. The argument that you tried to make about how like, well, there's a lot of people that regret doing like chemotherapy and radiation. I don't think it was a strong point here rhetorically. I think that most people don't want to have cancer and are willing to suffer a great deal to get rid of cancer. It's probably not the best, uh, probably not the best argument to go down. I think that like hitting on SSRIs could be really good there, right? SSRI, I think that SSRIs and a lot of like HRT stuff can be pretty comparable. Um, people have gender dysphoria. We could put them on puberty blockers um, at a young age. There are negative side effects to that. We always, we must acknowledge that. There are side effects, there are negative side effects. However, the goal when you prescribe any medication is that hopefully the positives will outweigh any potential negative side effects. The same is true of SSRIs. When you put somebody on an SSRI, they could become more suicidal. They could have other problems. There's issues related to libido, weight gain, hormone management, blah, 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 blah. But, but we hope that the pros outweigh the cons i think that going with the comparison there to like um ssris was way better than the weird cancer comparison yeah i thought at the time at least and my thoughts with the cancer comparison was because i felt like a lot of people especially in the audience have probably had like a loved one who's died from cancer has had to fight cancer and at least in my experience and the experience of a lot of people i know there's a there's a shit ton of a regret when it comes to getting treatment for cancer because chemo and radiation that shit sucks Wait, okay, wait. Get, like, I don't know what that means. I think that most well, people would rather suffer the chemo and radiation than die of cancer. No? I, I guess it depends. On most, maybe this is my my bias, my experience. Like, I, my whole family had to, like, convince my grandma to get, to get like, chemo and to actually get treatment for it. She just wanted to be like, okay, this is how long I have left. I think the quote was she wanted to die with a fishing pole in her hand. And I imagine that, like, a lot of people have had that experience. But honestly, if you think I, that I think was that, probably I think not the best that way to that's, go. That might be the case. So I think that it's very, very important to, draw, to try to distinguish who we're talking about. If you're talking about like an 80 year old person that's already on kind of like, I don't wanna say on Death Star, but like they're old and blah, blah, blah. And then they get like a cancer and it's like a 20% survival rate. And it's like, you know, okay, sure. Like this person might not wanna do chemo radiation. Like that's fine, okay? Now everybody has their own personal biases here. 
But if you don't acknowledge that, you could end up sounding really bad to some people. So my kid's mom had stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and she absolutely wanted to do chemo and radiation because she was like fucking 25 years old. She doesn't want to die to fucking cancer when she's in her 20s. Um, so like for anybody that had like a cancer experience or people that were under the age of like 50 or 60, when they hear something like that, it's like, wait, hold on, what? Some people regret, you know, chemo, you know, and I'm sure that there are people that are younger that, you know, died fighting all the way to the end that didn't necessarily regret their chemotherapy. You know, John... Um, Total Biscuit comes to mind um, for somebody that had, I think it was rectal cancer, and he ended up dying at the end. But I don't think he, I could be wrong, but I don't remember him ever saying like, oh, I should have never done chemo. I should have just died earlier, you know? Um, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I would navigate those waters carefully or be more clear exactly about what you're talking about. Yeah, feels bad, man. Seven, of course. Um, yeah, I, uh, I definitely agree. I think that's like a very niche uh, uh, example that I don't know if it appeals to as many people as I thought it did at the time. Mm -hmm. I think the SSRI one is probably a bit more broad because it isn't don't like a significant amount of people deal with mental health issues. Yeah, not only that, but it's also something that we tend to prescribe to children. It's also something that like um, children don't like, you know, you can argue like, does a child know their gender, blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, well, does a child know if they're depressed, blah, blah, blah. We still prescribe them SSRIs, right? Do you think we should stop all forms of like anti-SSRI treatment? Now they might bite the bullet on that. They might say, yeah, we shouldn't prescribe any of those drugs to anybody. Um, I think that depending on how the conversation goes, that kind of makes them look bad. Like, should you not be allowed to prescribe any type of like ADHD medication, anything like that? Like, I think that you can make them bite the bullet on that and then move on. I think still looks okay for your side. Um, also, it like, I, I, conservatives like to draw this differentiation between male and female so much. They like hardcore harp on this. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like I've heard this study thrown out a million times by anti-trans people um, or, or by like gender realist people when they're like, you know that babies, when they're only two or three months old, did you know that babies, male and female babies play with different types of toys? Males play with puzzle toys and females, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is actually something that's been studied quite a bit. Jordan Peterson works it up. It's true. Um, you know, male babies and female babies do play in different ways with different types of toys. You know, if you have evidence of babies doing this, then who are you to say that somebody that's 14 doesn't know anything about their fucking gender? Like, what a weird fucking thing to say. Uh, I think it's good to bring up stuff like that when, because for some reason, conservatives like to treat children, I say children, adolescent people, like they're just totally dumb fucks about everything in their life. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I think it's good to be able to bring up stuff like that, but that's just knowing it at the time, I think. Yeah, I think the example that I always brought up is like, most people, I feel like when they were in elementary school probably had like their first crush and probably were able to figure out what their sexuality was because if you if you're little timmy and you have a crush on little sally good chances are that you're straight not always but mm -hmm. at that point like you can be you can be 10 years old and have your your first crush and i feel like uh i've drawn that comparison a lot when it comes to gender identity yeah it could be over like gay stuff too um it might be that like um would you say that like somebody who's 14 like doesn't know if they're gay would you say that somebody who's, um, you know, like 15, 16 should be forced to date the opposite gender until they're 18 and can make a decision? You know, like you wouldn't, we wouldn't say stuff like this. It would be ridiculous. Um, thankfully, like the gay issues and everything have come far enough that even conservatives won't be like they were in the 90s about that stuff or 80s maybe. I don't know how far back it would go, but especially over the past like 10 or 20 years, I don't think you're going to find very many conservative people that are going to say like, oh yeah, gay conversion therapy is good. You know, like that's a pretty fringe position even, um, even among conservatives these days. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that um, pushing like because no conservative, like you said, is going to go against the gay like gay people. It's just that issue is not on that level. So much, yeah, so much acceptance for gay people in in the country at this point, and even like most Western countries, right? That go, biting that bullet for a conservative is a really bad look. So drawing a comparison there could be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my final one, and I I know I failed this one. Do not let Lauren slide away from the topics. That one, I feel like I completely failed at. Yeah, kind of. But again, this was hard because the topics were technically supposed to be about her book. So like a lot of people might, I guess like maybe in a left leaning audience, people might feel like she was the one that was pivoting. But I'm sure from her point of view and for a lot of other people, it might have felt like the conversation was already like kind of an ambush, you know, because like she came there to talk about like her kid's book. And then all of a sudden it ended up being a conversation about, you know, like every like all of her political views and everything, right? It ended up being way different than probably she maybe thought it was gonna be, maybe she knew going in, but. So it's, yeah, it's like, hard to say like where the pivot, like are people really gonna see her as pivoting if she is like saying that like, hey, like I would rather just focus on my book. Like I, maybe to somebody like in a left-leaning audience that might feel like a pivot, but I'm pretty sure to her, it probably just feels like that's what she came to talk about. Yeah, I guess this doesn't really matter so much for the audience because the audience doesn't know it was discussed before the debate happened in DMs. But like our uh, agreement for this discussion was like we would start off with the book and then we would move into like the topics that would sort of fractal off from it. 
Um, and that's what, I mean, I expected going in. I, I assume if she's good faith, that's what she expected as well. Um, and it definitely felt like I let her get away with that too much. I, I feel yeah, like- but when we say like, like fractal going off from it, it sounds like, I don't think that means that we take like an article on groupthink and then make that about like BLM. I don't think that that's the type of fractaling that she was probably thinking of. It probably just more had to do in general with like the type of book. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. No. Okay. That makes sense to me. E even if it was, that's even if that was what she thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter because the audience didn't know that. And that's yeah, that's what, what I felt like at the beginning. The I thought it was literally just a conversation about the book. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, oh, I want to go over this one really quick because I hear so many people talking about it. And I feel like they overblow it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't initially going to do this because I thought it maybe made Blair or not. I don't know why I said Blair. Um, I, I thought it maybe made uh, Lauren look a little bit too like palatable to my audience or to any like progressives watching. But the trans rights thing, asking her to say trans rights. And I was like, but my chat was like saying, get her to say trans rights. I was like, okay, whatever. Okay, uh, uh, Lauren, say trans rights. And she was like, uh, okay, yeah, trans rights. Can you say white rights? And I was like, I love white people. And then I said like white rights to, because I figured like, if I, I think people, are meme it. That, that people will meme it because you're saying white rights to somebody that was arguably at least at one point a white nationalist, which was probably not good. Like, I don't think it was that big a deal, um, but I don't care. But I also think it's super cringe when people do like the trans rights thing. I think it's cringe when every, any of that shit. So I don't, I don't think it was that big a deal. People are probably going to meme it really hard on you for a while, though, or maybe forever. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's perfect clippable, clippable material. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we're being honest, it, there's everyone that doesn't like me will find something to clip to like keep posting on the internet that's mm -hmm. it never goes away it's the internet um i guess this is like a final overarching question then i'll let you get back to the space game um do you think so i got into like like left-leaning politics watching a lot of your debates and going into it i mean i know from your history that you argued with people constantly you got into like real blood battles in in games like shit talking each other you did debates like way back in the day mm -hmm. um so I don't think anyone's really seen you before you were competent with debating. For me, I, I've only been doing this for like, I've done maybe like a few actual debates and I've only been doing this for two years. Mm -hmm. Is it really just a practice thing? Just keep doing it and you'll you'll get better? Or is it something that like, there's something about your personality at a base level that makes you good at debating. There is something, um, you learn this as a music major. I imagine you'll probably learn this if you pursue any skill. Um, if you pursue any skill at a high level. In high school, you learn a phrase called practice makes perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you hit college, the first thing people do is they erase that thought from your mind because it's absolutely not true. The actual phrase is supposed to be perfect practice makes perfect. So you have to practice something to get better at it, but the practice needs to be deliberate. Um, just doing something over and over again will not necessarily make you good at it. You have to be deliberate in terms of, I need to improve on this, I need to change this, I need to do that. So for me, there's two parts that helped me get good, I think, at what I do. The first part is that I had a lot of natural practice because you, like, you literally lived and died by your ability to shit talk on video games in my day, okay? I'm 32, I, I, don't, I think you're a little younger, right? Uh, I'm 21. 21, okay. Back in the day, games are way different now, okay? But back in the day, if you couldn't, if you couldn't out shit talk your opponent online, okay, you were trash, you were garbage. Nobody wanted to be your friend. People murdered your family, okay? You were basically a third world, okay, citizen. You were nobody. So I've had lots of practice shit talking people on the internet, which like it prepares you for like thinking quickly, countering what people are saying, integrating like jokes and shit. Like it sounds stupid, but I think that that practice actually helps a significant degree keep up in a live conversation because live combos are hard. And if you haven't noticed this yet, even I do this, I do this still today where you'll listen back to a conversation. You'll be like, oh my God, how, why am I not understanding what they're saying? Like, oh fuck, I'm totally missing this. Or, oh my God, why didn't I respond with that? It would have been so good. Like it'll happen. It still happens. It's really hard to do things on the spot. Um, um, which, by the way, nobody criticizing you will ever acknowledge that or understand that. They think that, like, oh, well, I would have thought of this. It's the ultimate, like, shower coaching, where everybody's, like, shower thoughts, they think they'd be able to do them live on the spot. Nobody can do this shit live on the spot. It's really, really, really fucking difficult. Um, so you basically, you have to, like, review your conversations. You have to be deliberate about it. You've got to think that, like, oh, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, or, I shouldn't say blah, blah, blah. You have to be like, oh, okay, well, I said this. I could have done this. Or rhetorically, I don't think this was good. You know, this could have been... Like, you have to make a conscious effort to review your stuff and figure out what worked and didn't work. Um, the, the two things, I'm sorry, real quick. The first thing was that I've done this a lot growing up, even before I started streaming, I was arguing with people. And then the second thing is um, I read, a, I used to read, I still do to some extent, I read a lot of other communities' feedback about me to get a feeling for how I did in a conversation. 
So anytime I would have a big debate with somebody, I'm reading my subreddit and my chat. I'm usually reading their chat. And then I'm usually um, reading like if 4chan threads pop up about me in the politics board, I'll read that. Um, I'll check like comments about me on my Kiwi Farms thread. Um, and then I'll check any of like the more weird forums, like if I'm posted on the Daily St Stormer or some other whatever liberal thing to get like an idea of like how people are feeling about me um, in the other communities as well. And you can pick up like certain trends based on how you did in the conversation. Uh, and that's a really important part too to reveal like what worked and what didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Pro no problem with like the continuing the thing. By the way, like the content that I always like best for me was when you talked about like your upbringing and how you got to where you are now. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, that's actually really interesting because I. So you played a lot of like uh, uh, games like StarCraft, right? You get into these lot. League is a big one. You get into these lobbies. It's a constant shit talking match, right? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have internet until I was ten. Mm -hmm. And then I immediately got into like Minecraft. I didn't have that uh, that third world going at each other, you know, upbringing where I was constantly arguing with people. Mm -hmm. And with like my my family dynamic, like my mom did not allow me to ever not be polite. So I it, like the politeness has been drilled into my brain, and that's something that I feel like I need to get over to a degree mm -hmm. because being afraid to uh, I played Septec, it's good. Um, being afraid to just get down and dirty with somebody before they've gotten to that point with you, I feel like that kind of holds me back a little bit or a lot. Well, like keep in mind that like getting down and dirty is that's like a very specific form of argumentation, but you don't ever have to do that. Like Jordan Peterson doesn't do that. And people think that he's like, and Ben Shapiro doesn't like scream at people on the internet for whatever people think about his debate tactics or whatever, or, or Steven Crowder isn't in conversations with, like screaming at people. You don't have to do like that ultra aggressive. In fact, it pains me to say this and it's sad to say this because probably where I excel the most, I would argue that that form of like conversation is largely like gone. I think that was gone in around like 2019. I think people stopped doing that when everybody realized that like, they had more to lose from debates than actually gaining from them. So I think like now, um, I think that the goal is when you, when you look at people and how they have conversations these days, I think that like studying Vosh can be like a good example. So Vosh is never actually, if you watch the way that he does debates, Vosh isn't barely even listening to what the other person is saying. Almost all of his statements are directed at the audience, um, where it's one of those things, it's almost like a fourth wall where like um, somebody might be debating Vosh over a topic, but all Vosh is saying is things that he thinks makes him look the best rhetorically in front of his audience and maybe to people in the center, hopefully. Um, although sometimes he does better at it than other times. But I think that like that style of conversation seems to be more rhetorically effective and more popular than one, than definitely than being ultra combative or two, even like legitimately engaging with the points of the person you're arguing with. It just depends, I guess, what your goal is at the end of the day. Yeah, I guess I, I do miss like watching those old really blood sports debates from like 2016, 2017, even early 2018. Mm -hmm. it, it is sad that that stuff's gone now because God, it would have been if I was if I was more competent at debating, if I was better at it, that shit would have been so fun to be a part of. Um, yeah, but, but I guess that's gone now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the problem. Honestly, the problem is pretty simple. Do you remember the Raj Royale on Twitch? Did you ever? Look at any of this shit. Yeah, back before Austin show, yeah. Yeah, the problem is that like those types of people just don't make it very long. Um, I, people are, I, I'm gonna jerk myself up a little. People get spoiled by people like me. Um, and I think maybe Vosh is like this, but like the, the types of personalities that can continuously fight with people and like feel, f have fun doing that. This is a very, very rare, very abnormal personality type. Most people don't enjoy that type of like um, conflict over and over and over again. These communities t generally become incredibly self-destructive incredibly quickly. We saw it happen to the entire septic community, um, all the anti-SJWs when all the infighting began and shit, when people started going against Thunderfoot, when Sargon started to get exercise from the community, when people started to leave. We saw it happen in a smaller community with like Tonka Saw and um, with uh, Tonka Saw and um, all of the people in that community, JF, Andy Worski, they kind of like fell into disarray and they started infighting. We saw it happen with the Raj Royale on Twitch, which isn't even politics based really. Um, those people started to fall away into infighting. Like most people just don't want to be involved in conflict like that over long periods of time. They just can't handle it. It feels horrible to most humans. It's like, it's a very alien type of thing to do. And like most normal people don't enjoy that type of thing. So uh, yeah, I don't think that any, that, that type of content is never gonna survive very long in any particular community, unfortunately. I guess. But. You are right. Like you can't just have constant, nonstop every conversation you have with somebody is blood. I do like occasionally, whenever I see like the, the like what was the big mad guy that couldn't stop panting like a fucking panther and kept talking oh, about your son, Jack. <laughs> Oh, yeah, something that's strange is I said you were big mad on Twitter, and then you said mm -hmm. you weren't mad, but 
now right here, you kind of look like you're big mad. No, I, I sound like I'm a little bit angry because I'm talking to a shithead. Uh -huh. hey, well, right now you're breathing heavier than Matthew Bellamy between your statements, okay? So let's take a deep breath. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, but you're not really a sock uh -huh. dem, but anyway, go ahead. What, wait, I'm sorry. What do you think? It, could you just tell me what it means to be a sock dem? I mean, who we can like frame a it. shit, you pedantic fucking moron? <laughs> who gives a shit, you fucking pedantic idiot? I mean, not big mad. Let's just look through the entire thing. If you are so con, did she yeah, ask to see his dick? Do you think the people that are in prison right now deserve to have gone there for weed? No, I don't. Do you... Okay, so so, uh -huh. I truly don't give a shit. Show it then. Show it then. Liar. No, no, dude. no. You're I'm saying liar, I did not bro. saying that. Liar, I never said that. Liar, I'm saying liar. that if you're gonna, <laughs> you dumb shit motherfucker. I would love to see the proof, liar. Are you okay? I'm I'm perfectly fine, but I would just love to see if the evidence, if you have it, you liar. Uh -huh. uh, um, uh, uh, oh my God, are you okay? What you does, does Zurich right? have to do with rape? No, but <laughs> you're a fucking piece of shit, and uh -huh. so are all your fans. Have a good one. Have fun, my white friend. It's not Jack Ryan. Jack something. I've got a ja section of it on my site. But go Jack Allison, maybe. Yeah, 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 it doesn't matter what his name is. He's relevant. Um, like having the occasional uh, uh, blood debate like that, mm -hmm. that's always fun. And I do like that. And I want to be able to do really good faith, like calm on the topic debates as well. But I also do want to be able to get to the point where I can go all in with like the, the really bloody violent debates, you know? Is that just something that you... Is that something that, am I at this point as a 21 year old too old to like learn that shit? I mean, no, you can, you just have to practice. It's just a matter of practicing it. But like, um, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in matching people's energy. If somebody's going to come at me like real crazy, I'll go crazy back. I'm fine with that. Um, but if somebody's not doing that and you're the one that takes it there first, like you're going to look really bad, I think. Well, yeah, uh, you can't just like dive into that on your own. But I guess it's like you have to gauge the debate to figure out like, okay, are they, are they getting to a point where it would be okay to start digging in for blood i guess um you want practice the closest you're going to get to blood sports now is um you can try demon mama but i think that that's always going to be really hard because anytime you fight with demon mama you're always going to get called transphobic so basically it sucks to say this but in my opinion i think trans people are generally off limits for debate on the internet because you're always going to get called transphobic no matter how you engage with them so i would be like really careful there but if you want to argue with um if you want to argue with people that uh, want to talk about like the genocide and the Uyghur stuff for China? That's probably where you're going to find the most passionate debate online now because people are very quick to what about is for the United States. Um, and a lot of leftists, they, even if they aren't tankies, will like simp hard for fucking China and like quickly condemn and make bad comparisons to the US. So that's probably going to find like most of the blood sports these days. But I don't think you're going to get people screaming at you over like social health care or something like that. Yeah. The only person I can think of that does like the really crazy shit is the infrared dude. And that that guy's like, I'm pretty sure that dude's trolling. Like besides that, I think like the most uh, well known. He's, oof. I mean, I wouldn't, he does troll. But he's fairly smart. Wait, I, who, I is, is like, who is Lanny in your chat? Lanny's my girlfriend. Oh, nice. She's a fucking moron. So like she even just did it to me. What I just said was that is transphobic. <laughs> um, sorry, go ahead. Um, what were we saying? Oh yeah, the infrared guy. He's like um he's a he's a character. I think that if you catch him being calm, you can be calm, but he's he's also somebody that will meme and go big into the blood sports. But but he plays like a character, so I would never I don't like to argue like that with characters, um, because then I feel stupid. Like I'm being sincere and they're just a character, so yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yep. My girlfriend's off limits, okay? All right. Um Well tell her to stop talking I shit about me then. Okay, sorry, go ahead. But I can't control her. Wait, I can't control Then you can't control what me talking shit about her. What the fuck? I can't, listen, I can't control women. I don't have that power. All well, right. Then stop protecting them. Treat them like equal people, all right? You say dumb all right, shit. Yeah, equal, equal rights equals means equal fights. Okay. Um, no, but seriously, though, I think, mm -hmm. I, I guess, like, the, the main thing that concerns me is that a lot of people, I guess, like, the debate sphere, especially in politics, has sort of had the ground laid by, at least in the, like, the progressive side, has had the, had the ground laid by you and and Vosh as well, even though I started doing YouTube and even politics before Vosh did. Mm -hmm. And so every time I do a debate or anything that I do, everybody will always compare me to either you or Vosh. And that's something I'm just never going to be able to like get away from, I feel like. Yeah, unfortunately, it's obvious. It becomes very clear, even people like Demon Mama, when they're kind of like inspired by certain people because a lot of the mannerisms and stuff are going to be similar. So people are always going to make those comparisons. I mean, there's nothing you can do to escape that. Yeah, I guess. Is there like any advice that you would give for dealing with that? 
um be your own person i don't know it's it, be yourself <laughs> yeah it's easy for me to say i don't like to watch anybody else so everything i do is kind of like I, I don't i don't ever have to worry about that but i mean if i did consume if i was like a mass consumer of content i would probably start to take on a lot of the like mannerisms of those people i don't know how you escape that i mean like i kind of do with like friends and shit like i'll even like like mr moot and i'll complain that some meme he does is like incredibly fucking stupid and then i'll find myself like unironically saying it like three or four days later but mr moot doesn't do politics so i imagine if i was listening to any political figure i would start to copy their mannerisms and shit it would just happen yeah yeah i feel like i copy the mannerisms of non-political figures like more like i don't know i walk i watch like a fair amount of summit and train wrecks mm -hmm. so that like some of their mannerisms rub off on me and i guess when you hang out with somebody like because i'm friends with vosh obviously some of his stuff rubs off on me i watch your content mm -hmm. and you rub off on me all the time uh <laughs> um no, but I, I feel like uh, that's something that you can't really avoid. And all I can really do is argue with people whenever they, they say that or ignore it. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's the reaction I want to see from DGG. DGG. Good job, guys. Um, yeah, I guess that's basically all. Unless, anything, unless there was anything else you wanted to go over. Um, nope. I mean, practice makes perfect. You just got to keep doing it. Um, good luck. All right. Fi uh, final meme. Uh Fuck Mike from PA. I think I think uh, DGG can appreciate that. True. Let's fuck find some common PA. ground here. Not just fike. Not just fuck Mike from PA. Fuck all socialists. Amen, brother. Oh, also one more thing. It's guillotine. Please, guillotine, 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 guillotine. Say it. Wait. Did, say, did guillotine. I say guillotine. Say guillotine. Did I say that? Say guillotine, guillotine. rights. Guillotine. guillotine rights. Yes. Guillotine rights. That's true. I fucked up. Gu oh, so you want to guillotine the rights? That's what you're saying. You want to kill conservatives. Good ones, Andrew Hall. You're banned. I will never See you later. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Yeah, yeah, in New York, concrete jungle where dreams are made of. There's nothing you can do. Now you're in New York.